Hello, dear Hot Potters. <laughs> Welcome back to our Hot Pot Talk Show. And I'm one of your hosts, DJ Dakiri. And it's Nunu. So today is our fourth episode. And we have our beautiful guest here. Today is all about building a family in China. So it's family day. <laughs> we yeah. have... Let's introduce you two first. You guys introduce yourselves. Uh, first and foremost, I'm um, Hezron Henry, better known as MC Blank. I've been in China. <laughs> yep. I've been in China for nine years. I'm from the Caribbean, Grenada. Big up, big up. <laughs> hey, uh, this is my wife on the right. And we have a beautiful four-year-old daughter, just turned four this week. So that's Aww. me. Aww. Wow. <laughs> Myself, I will say that my name is Marina, and I am 32 years old, and I've been in China for a little bit over nine years. That's wow, you guys are veterans. Yeah, yeah. we some old and Chinese people over here. Uh, <laughs> I'm Michelle, Michelle Laurie now, uh, married with a one-year-old son. I've been in China for eight years, just behind these guys. Yeah, all the old uh, painting. Are you guys <laughs> planning to leave? <laughs> 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 we have to. We have to. Okay, so then let's time. start with. So you guys all are married, right? So let's yeah. start with the steps before that. What did you do in your relationship? So you're dating and everything, but then you start to realize, okay, we want to take it to the next step. What did you do? Let me go to the women first. What are well, challenges? What are the challenges in China? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey. I was 16, my daddy used to tell me, okay, it is time. So, <laughs> but then the time was, you know, passing and passing and it's like, uh, where is he? I'm like, um, not there yet. Not he's there right yet. there, he's coming, he's, he's coming. coming. <laughs> and I don't know, it's just as I saw him, I just realized that's him. Wow. Oh. Oh. Like, no. very, Remember yeah. the first time we met? She actually didn't want to talk to me. Oh, but that's a game. We do that. It's, oh, oh. We have to play hard to get, that's right? <laughs> I don't really need to teach you this. <laughs> I know, I know. Secrets. Yes. I know, right? It's just everything about this person. Then. Okay. Um, oh. It's just like, I don't know. Just everything. Oh. Just made me realize that this is the man I want to be the wife of. So. Okay. So was there any, like, things that you were, let's say, um... Afraid of mm -hmm. like to actually getting serious, uh, like when like if your relationship will lead to something serious like a marriage. But you're in China, right? So, was there anything that kind of like any pressure yeah, or pressure challenges or challenges like that you're actually building family in China? I can survive anywhere. <laughs> Just <laughs> damn, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what about your mission? Um. Well, personally, I can't say I came to China to look for love, but I happened to meet love when I got here. Ah, sea I, lines, Jare. <laughs> no, honestly, I didn't see myself finding the my husband, the love mm -hmm. of my life here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just saw myself, you know, when you're an African child, you go, I came here for school. I, like the whole okay. family education, is here, the education, 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 hustle. I was all about the hustle. Those who know me, I was here for the hustle. But... You know, when love takes over, things just happen. So for me to say I plan towards whatever I have today, outlying, it's, it just happened. Grace happened. And yeah, we're here and we're still here together, which is pretty so cool. So basically, you just adjusted to the yeah, situation. Yeah, you adjust to the situation. Really mm -hmm. like, yeah. What about you? What were your challenges? My challenges? If any. <laughs> if any, of course there were challenges. But to me, it was really simple, you know. When we met, we just hit it off and it just took off from there, mm -hmm. you know? And it wasn't something that we planned. Honestly, coming to China, I w it wasn't something I was looking forward to, getting married and having a, a female <laughs> like her. But, you know, it just, it just, we just hit it off and it happened and we're happy today. That's amazing. About that, though, like, another thing I've noticed is when you come, when people travel abroad, I don't think you're supposed to go and look for love. You know, exactly. people say it's hard to find love in China, but the minute you start looking for something, chances are you will not find it. Be it clothes, be it food in the house, anything. It, it if you look for it, naturally. you won't have. So yeah. I just think that when people say it's so hard to find love, it's because we're looking for it. It's Let true. it just happen naturally. When 
it's a, when people are supposed to meet, they're just going to meet, you understand? So there's no need to look for love. Let love meet you whilst you're doing whatever you're doing. That's right. Because okay. the truth is here, we're here for, for the hustle. If you're blessed enough to meet the love of your life, yeah, you bless up. If you're not, go back home, you'll find them. <laughs> they are dead. <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> they're dead. That's fair enough. What about, because both of you had your weddings in China. Mm. And I want to know how it was planning a wedding. Well, I was not, I, had, I didn't have anything to do with the planning. You got to talk to the phone <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, That's exactly. the problem. <laughs> How was it? What were the, like, pressures? Only one thing I got to add, we didn't want a big wedding. We just wanted some so close small. friends. Close friends, And yes. that's what we did. We had a small wedding. We went. We rented out a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Got food, music, dancing, close friends, and we had a good time. How many years, Samarine, by the way? We've been married since December 26, 2013. So wow. It, wow. But we are together since 2011. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's so we've been So tell us the... The wedding the drama. drama. Well, <laughs> well, first of all, you were hiring the Chinese people to plan the wedding, right? No. Or you were just like, doing by yourself? It's just or? me and my girls. Oh, that's... Wow. that's yeah. It was a simple wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was on my shoulders. I was already pregnant. So my husband said, anything you want to do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. So, okay. Okay. It's just a very simple wedding. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you? <laughs> it was lit. <laughs> but it wasn't small. Even if I wanted a big wedding, I don't know so many people to have a big wedding. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being big. It was just a perfect wedding. The planning, though, it was difficult. Because, you know, the way we see weddings on TV and back home... People say they buy stuff here in China, but when it got to planning my wedding, I couldn't find anything. <laughs> and it's so expensive. All this made in China, made yes, in China. Yes, I don't, I don't know where they <laughs> Where are they? Tell us. <laughs> and, you know, it was another difficult thing is the, um, just moving from, from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. I got married in Beijing. It's expensive. And just having a wedding here, it's expensive. I don't know why people think that because you're in China, everything's going to be cheap. I remember I had a conversation with... Um, a uh, guy I know, and he was like, oh, your wedding's going to be cheaper because <laughs> you're in China. And I was like, no, it's not going to be cheap because you have to consider the venue. The minute they look at your color or you, they're just going to go like, oh, you're a foreigner. Probably you have money for you to want to have a wedding here. So, you know. So consider that charge. movement alone in Beijing, point A to point B, you're looking for close to 1,000 RMB just for two days, just China moving, just, just to fit in. dress fitting, Decoration. one market to the other. And the way Beijing is now, things are so far away from each other. It was difficult, but we just, we, we made a way. We made a way. The, my friends and family were there for me. I wouldn't have done it alone. And my husband, I can't say he didn't do anything. He like did, he yeah. did a lot. He did so much. It's unbelievable. <laughs> well, he did, he no. did so much. The it thing was is, he was keeping quiet, so we didn't even no. know. And I was stressed, and like, and oh my God, it's going to be embarrassing. And he kept on, he was so cool about everything. Yeah. Even the, the dancers, everything. He knew what's up. Mm -hmm. And he just made it perfect for me. Because mm -hmm. I, by myself, <laughs> nah, I wouldn't have had half the wedding I had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? But you had the wedding you liked, you had the wedding you the, wanted. And, the, the and it wasn't, it was, it was a small wedding, but it was lit. It was lit, you know, because <laughs> we didn't the want, point uh, if, the uh, the day. seriously, yeah. if, we, if I wanted a, you know, I know everybody in Beijing. So if you I would wanted have had 400 people. I would have oh had, everybody in Beijing would have been in my wedding, but we didn't want that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's all about, yeah, it's all about the right yeah. people. And so we just kept it simple. Yeah, but it was damn expensive, though. And speaking mm -hmm. the truth, by then we didn't have like enough money, you know, to afford the big wedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're pregnant, so you have to have yeah, like your priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. At the time, sure. you were like four months pregnant. Four months. Oh. Yeah, I think he was kicking already. Yeah, talking about oh, our like, let's talk about the babies. Babies. Let's talk about yeah, the babies. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a beautiful Victoria. She's uh, four years old, four years right? Old. And um, you share as a JJ. Jason, 18 months. 18 months. So, How? tell us, please, <laughs> let's go, like, to the, let's go back to a period when you were pregnant. Right. In China. In China. What was the difficulties? Compared to, for example, back home, like, what, like, was, like, difficulties or what was easier to do here? Like, talking about, like, uh, during the pregnancy, mm -hmm. giving birth, you know, all this. 
Of course, the prices mm. of medical service here, they are pretty high. And I wanted to do it as cheap as possible. Yes. We didn't have a lot of money. Yeah, then. yeah. Uh, of, uh, well, I have a daddy and he, I can say he has money, but I didn't want to ask for money because, come on, I am a big woman, I have a husband, so yeah, I have to yeah, do yeah. it on our own. So then, apparently, I was looking for um, for a hospital when one of my friends, one of my Chinese, Chinese friends, she called me and she said, like, oh, I have a friend and she works in the in that hospital called Chaoyang Hospital. Chaoyang Chao Hospital, Chao okay. So she can help you like to check in. Okay, okay. Because you have to start it pretty early. Yeah, right they have this whole long process, yeah, right? Like, yeah. It's like a whole queue you have to join. Oh, it's, it's like you cannot come there when you're already six or seven months. No, you have, have to go at the beginning. The beginning of the pregnancy. Go through the whole I was like six weeks pregnant by then, and she's like, "It's too late." How pregnant I am? Like six weeks, and she's like, "Oh, it's too late. You have Whoa. to do it when you're four weeks pregnant." I'm like. It's okay, you come. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it help started. you because she's like, like okay. That's good. So I went there and she helped me. She gave me like the result of someone else. It's just she put my okay. name there and stuff and then But that's good that she she was able to yeah, help. help like, yeah, they are really helpful. Yeah, what about you, Michelle? Tell us. <laughs> well, yes, I got pregnant here and gave birth here. Yes, it's expensive. Um, for me, my parents are here in Beijing, but then when just the antenatal care move, like when I was a few months pregnant, mm -hmm. just the random checkups and stuff, it, it was, was so expensive, expensive for me and for my husband. And me being me, it was, I'm a first time mom, I did not see the reason why I should pay close to $20,000 just for me to push a baby out. So by God's grace, um, my husband got a job in another city and we moved to the city and I got the best hospital The hospital, ever. guys? What city was it? Hefei, okay. Anhui. Hefei I gave birth in Hefei and the hospital has the same, sta almost the same standard with Beijing United. Mm -hmm. Everything was on point, private room, everything. And I paid less, like I kind of, con almost consultation fee of, Beijing United. It I was. I think you were. Uh, it was twenty five to 20, thirty. Twenty five. But 30. it was like a VIP room. You had your room, which was massive, and there was about six of us at any given time. Mm -hmm. Yet it wasn't like claustrophobic because it had a living room a and a kitchenette, and a study, and then her room. Choose Quiet, big. clean. It was so nice. It was very, and they were very helpful mm -hmm. that my mom always says that i gave birth the easiest way they say in africa i wouldn't have survived because <laughs> i was screaming and they were so helpful i i they was just they were just perfect i don't know like if people say chinese hospitals are scary but that hospital i have a different story to tell it was yeah, perfect well, mm -hmm. it was good because hers was good as well because mm -hmm. we got like we had the chow yang vip mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so it well, was, it was comfortable time to give birth. And we got to the hospital, they're like, oh, you're supposed to, like... What did they say? I call that Yajin thing. Yeah, you yeah. had... Deposit? Deposit, oh. like, 8,000 right now. Like, but you were, like, giving you're, the... You're literally in labor. <laughs> oh, my God. They're like, you can't check in until you give us, like, 8,000. I think really? they... 8, and the, the, thing is, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, I forgot my bank card at home. Of course, you were trying to Why get her to the hospital. Like I'm, I'm so food. lit. I, lo I, lo I locked myself out of the house twice <laughs> the same day. And then I forgot my bank. I had to go back home to get my bank card to come back and pay for the there. hospital. I was just there laying down and everybody was walking, passing by. And, and you were in labor. And I was <laughs> God. And 8,000 renminbi is, uh, not, yeah. is how it's much US dollars. dollars. Yeah, yeah that's, just, that's just for the deposit. That was just I did the just deposit. Like, right? You need to pay the deposit and only then they actually will start, you will, yeah. you will start doing work. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, so I guess also because it's like, I guess it's capital, pay right? Mm -hmm. So it's like the more expensive. medical care is so expensive. Yeah, it is, it is. And if it's like, not talking about Chinese hospitals, right? The Chinese mm -hmm. like... Um, like the high call, the, not the government. The, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you go to some private, private. sectors, which is like United Family, mm -hmm. SOS, forget it's about it. There's a big difference. I had like six other women in the same room with me. Their husbands, their nannies, their children. 
everybody was there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it gotta be stressful. You wanna you just give a birth, right? Not if you to just give birth, actually. You do not want to see anyone. anyone. Oh, you don't want to see people before and after. You just want to zone back because I believe I went somewhere else. <laughs> and you and came I came back. Yeah, I just needed to come back and put my body where I left it. But really? the thing is, there's so many people in there's so many people in China. Their hospitals, unlike say, for example, in the UK. Even in public hospitals, it doesn't matter. You do have your private rooms. The women yes. have their private rooms. But in China, there's just not enough space. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, there's not enough space. There's too <laughs> many people. And in China, people have children strategically. Mm -hmm. yes. So a certain year, you hardly see any pregnant women. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, all of a sudden, yeah. they're all you there. Get a so baby. then the you hospitals get a baby. are packed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yes, because we, understandable. we had a VIP service that we paid for and mm -hmm. we were supposed to get a VIP room. But, but the, the day on the day, we couldn't no VIP because room. the hospital was full. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's why we ended up in a room with six people. But they tried wow. that with me. They gave me something else. And I was like, I was in labor and I was busy telling my husband. Mm -mm, mm -mm, it did not look like yeah. this. Mm -mm. And then they were like, no, this is the place where you go first. And then after you give birth, we'll put you in another room. I wanted to go see my room, which I paid yeah, for. Exactly. Oh, she, I said, which room is this one? Where am I? I'm in the hospital now and I'm losing my mind already. Telling you. Since we, we're home and we sat down to have lunch and she was peeling a mango and her water broke. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm starting to go crazy already. Oh, <laughs> just like, um, Call the ambulance. How to go? How to go? <laughs> <laughs> I was going nuts. I locked myself out of the house twice in two days. I mean, no you cannot prepare me seriously, for this, though. though. Of course. It's I, very I noticed, I think the baby's coming today. And I woke up in the morning and said to my husband, the baby's coming today. Say, that's what you've been saying for the past three days. And I'm like, no, <laughs> the baby's coming. Say, who told you? And I said, no, on, on a serious note, we have to go to the hospital because the doctors say today's the day. They say, that's not what it means, Michelle. Just go take your shower and sleep. And I was like, mm -mm, we're going to the hospital. And then I was going out. I said, okay, I should get my bag. He said, what do you need a bag for? We are coming back to this house. And I was like, no, today the baby is coming. And when we're leaving the door, he said to me, if you don't come back with the baby, <laughs> we're going to fight <laughs> and, uh, and I, I was with my aunt and I said my aunt just make sure that this is my bag I left it on the couch and I had the baby that same day and I told her, I told you the baby was coming today it was a, he actually came on the day the day they the told day us they the baby was coming that's the cool. day Jay came but what about two days, two days early like oh, okay. difficulties like we've uh, actually to explain Chinese people to communicate them with, mm -hmm. with them in mm -hmm. a hospital because like we're not Native, we do speak Chinese like some of us, right? But we're not. No, when you're ready to push native, out a baby, your like Chinese is going to do it. Oil was an oil At was that time, easy. I didn't feel any language difference between us because <laughs> I don't know, just we want one wave. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Everything they were telling me, I was understanding. Okay. Wow. <laughs> a big difference is the equipment. Uh, in all movies, I see them women in labor and they like sit in a comfortable chair and holding stuff and husband like, come on, baby, push. <laughs> in my situation, first they didn't allow him mm -hmm. to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. that's husband. a point to make. They don't allow the husbands Men. in the birthing room. They're not, Men in general. No one is allowed there, no. When it was the time to push the That was driving me nuts. They, they brought me to the birth room mm -hmm. and I see the table, like flat table. Mm -hmm. It was covered with some kind of material and they're like okay get on the table like sterile i cannot <laughs> oh so they my. just oh. went put, put it a little bit higher i mean good thing i was laying down and okay get on the table yourself so i got on the table and put strong it was not a chair it was a table <laughs> oh my god yeah. she's a strong woman strong in the room yeah. like there's no husband to actually mm -hmm. it's crazy oh, and you're probably out there like what's happening <laughs> no i was <laughs> going nuts he was oh, my nuts. husband was on was wechat I got my friend with me, she was supporting me yeah, in another room, but they didn't even allow her to enter the birth room. There was, they were uh, strong. Yeah, she's like, strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. strong woman. Yeah, that's strong that's woman. amazing. What about yours? Language. The thing is, I was there. <laughs> so uh, my Chinese was is okay, but then, you know, in school we learn yogwa, dogwa, jiega, nega. That's not the. Chinese I need in the hospital so <laughs> that's difficult because you're trying to express yourself Some and describe what's happening and I don't know what you call an intestine or a womb in Chinese so that was difficult for me but then when you're giving birth <laughs> uh, you won't even remember nothing I couldn't I didn't know English I didn't know Chinese I was speaking word. tongues 
I don't remember anything. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> they, I don't. I, I like. It was just oh a blackout. God. I don't remember nothing. All I know is that I didn't have a language. I believe I spoke in tongues, because <laughs> there was no language I spoke. It, it was. I didn't know any Chinese. I left okay. my Chinese outside, and then I remember that says yeah. Like after when they gave me the baby, I was like ah she she. But before they like the man, I was like I do not understand what you're trying to say. I just want my baby out. <laughs> that's what that's, that's all I need. But like they language were so doesn't come. Nice. The doctors Amazing. were coming in Amazing. often. The actual doctor that gave But if you notice it's, that, it's like that in China. When you leave Beijing and you go to other smaller cities, the Chinese people are usually they're nicer. nicer. They are nicer. They they're yeah. more patient, yes. I would say. They're in nicer. Beijing they're not and patient. You'll you'll notice that. Yeah. 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 They so were then nice. that's probably your different yes. experience as well, just how And I think the excitement of having a foreigner in their hospital. Exactly. They even gave me a push gift before like when yeah, we they left. Oh, they were really push very chair nice. and all this. They like were very, a very bag nice. And stuff. They were very it was nice. Good. I don't think I'm going to give a birth in Beijing, though. No. <laughs> I wouldn't give birth in Beijing. Yeah, but what about, um, was there any difficulties because, like, your baby mixed, right? Yeah. And, like, Jay is like blood mixed. Like, <laughs> it's black. Yeah, it's black. Yeah. So what's the like?